What's going on everyone? I'm gonna be honest with you guys. The market was super boring today and not too much happened. I guess traders were too busy watching uh, the solar eclipse, but while today was boring, we do have a very exciting week ahead of us as not only do we have crucial inflation data about to release, but we also have an FOMC minutes report. Earnings season is back in action and we have volatility rising across the market. So we are set for an action-packed week. Uh, make sure to stick with us until the end to uh, see some of the best uh, moving stocks in the market right now and important events to pay attention to. And Tom, while today's heat map definitely doesn't look like it, 57% uh, of stocks did finish in the green today. So with that being said, let's jump right into today's episode. Yeah, the heat map actually looks more red than green to me. I was surprised when you said that 57% were because I just was very surprised based off of the way it looks. And whenever you go over to the overall market like the SPY, it was really choppy today. And we've been watching and I've been talking about this trend line here that the SPY has been bouncing off of quite a bit lately. Again today, that holds up as the resistance right around 520 to 521 and literally right off that trend again. So I'm still watching like that 520 resistance into tomorrow if it's able to break out above that that would be a good sign but i don't know mike there's been a lot of stiff resistance here we might end up seeing a bit of a pullback especially with that inflation data coming into view but mike uh, one stock that did actually pretty good today overall was tesla it was one bright green spot on the heat map up 4.9 percent and last week we actually talked about an article with reuters where they actually put out some uh, fake news i guess you could say and then elon had to come get the stock to buy right back up with his Twitter post. But at the end of the day, it looks like they're actually unveiling a robo taxi product on August 8th. And a lot of people have like kind of contemplated it. Are they really going to do a robo taxi? Are they really, it looks like they are, is they're going to look to unveil this, but I don't know, Mike, I don't think that this is going to necessarily bring Tesla stock back from the dead, but it's good to see the short term price action here. And that's the thing. It's like you can have any sort of event or catalyst or just honestly anything. And as long as it brings in that imbalance of supply and demand in the short term, that's really all that matters for like short term traders. So looking at Tesla stock right now, as you mentioned, it had a pretty good day. It's bouncing off support uh, right around $160 a share in a strong way. And it has been one of the worst performing stocks in the S&P 500 all year long. So, you know, this uh, recent burst of positivity is worth watching with Tesla. If it can continue higher, maybe it'll start to attract some of the momentum that it used to have. But at this point, it's just like a good sign to see, but it still has a lot more work to do to, uh, you know, get rolling like it used to. Yeah, it definitely does. And it's good in the short term, though, to still see that good price action off that 160 support that you mentioned. And Mike, that looked like a pretty significant level. So I went over to the book map. And of course, today, there was like 420,000 shares stacked up there in the middle of the day today. And then there's even major resistance around 175 and 180 to kind of keep an eye out for here. And as we go to after hours, you can see that the price action uh, right on the left side of your screen is right where those orders were stacked right around market close. So Keep watching those big levels there on the charts, Mike, but that 160 area is huge and that 175 to 180 is huge on the resistance side. But I'm kind of liking this price action in this channel. If it starts to get that good movement back up, it could start to break back out here. No doubt. And speaking of breakouts, we have to take a look at Bitcoin right now. That thing is back at the $72,000 level and it uh, had one of its uh, best like days in a while. So what's the story with this one? Yeah, it's huge here. Bitcoin is up 3.39%. I know everybody has been waiting for the Bitcoin halving event. And Mike, it's just getting closer. Within the next couple weeks, we're going to see it happen. There's a pretty cool countdown on Watcher Guru here. 11 days, 1 hour, and 14 minutes is currently the estimated time. I'm sure later tonight when the video comes out, might be an hour or two less. But it's looking good. The predicted date is April 19th. So watch out for Bitcoin around like April 18th, April 19th. We'll probably probably see some pretty big influxes of movement there and it's just good to see it continuing to be volatile in the short term Mike a lot of these uh Bitcoin stocks like Coinbase Mara and Riot were extremely volatile today 
And one thing with Bitcoin and cryptos is, you know, regardless of the news, especially when it comes to short term trading, it is all a game of momentum. What you'll see is like when you look at stocks like uh, Mara and Riot, those stocks are uh, selling off quite a bit, while other crypto related stocks like Coinbase actually had a decent move to the upside. So when it comes to cryptos, it's all a game of momentum. When you see, you know, this area of the market moving to the upside in a big way, there are a lot of scalp options opportunities associated with that but like if you're trading a stock that's not actually moving it might not be worth the risk so for example with like coinbase or ibit those stocks moved up while mara and riot just kind of got stuck in the mud so just make sure when you're trading crypto related stocks you're trading something that's actually moving at least in terms of short term uh, price action yeah, that's a very good point. It was pretty crazy to see Mar and Riot falling off like this. I know that actually caught a lot of traders off guard today. So really, Mike, I think my favorite in the short term is Coinbase. I don't know about you. It's up like 6.68% today. The options move pretty well on Coinbase too. There's always a lot of volume there. So that's a good sign. I think Coinbase would be my favorite. Too bad IBIT doesn't have options yet, right? Not yet, right? Eventually one day, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, good stuff there. And and uh, Tom, like I said, we have a very big week lined up on the economic schedule. We have crucial inflation data set to release on Wednesday, one hour before the market opens. Uh, basically, what makes this inflation report uh, a lot more interesting than most, in my opinion at least, is the fact that inflation previously came in at 3.2%, and this report is expected for it to come in at around 3.4%. So, you know, God forbid if it comes in at 3.5, 3.6%, Six, maybe 3.7 percent that can uh, change some things very very quickly for the market so just keep that in mind as always inflation data is super important to watch and I would say it's been one of the most important economic data points over the past like three years at this point yeah, I would say so as well. And it's really going to change like the Fed's outlook on what they're going to do with the rate cuts and pausing and everything like that. It's going to be a huge event on Wednesday. And then, of course, the FOMC minutes come out at 2 p.m. Uh, just a little bit after. So it's going to be a, a pretty fun day on Wednesday, to say the least, Mike. And then, of course, uh, we have a lot of earnings on the radar, too, here this week. Tilray reports tomorrow. I know a lot of people were talking about Tilray today. Delta Airlines on Wednesday before open. And then on Friday, we have a lot of the big banks so it's a pretty action-packed week between uh, everything going on Mike and I know Tilray was the uh, talk of the town and CGC even has news as well yeah no doubt and tell us more about that because these uh, weed stocks have been going crazy over the past couple weeks yeah, they definitely have. And CGC is one of the more talked about weed stocks, we could say, over the past few weeks, too. I know ACB has had some pretty good movement in its own right. But the interesting thing with Canopy Growth or CGC is that they are actually possibly going to have another class of shares come out here for called Canopy USA. They're going to have a shareholder vote this Friday, April 12th. So mark that on your calendars. But uh, essentially what they're doing, they're trying to in a way, get away from their Canada operations and then get onto the U.S. market. And whenever you go to the bottom of this article here, there was a huge statement that I saw down here. Apparently, this is going to give them a head start, like whenever, if, if it does become federally legalized in the U.S., doing this is going to kind of give them a head start because, you know, right now, Canopy is kind of in Canada mainly. So this will kind of be really good for them. It'll allow a few deals with uh, certain companies to go through too, like Acreage Holdings. But at the end of the day, that's going to be huge for CGC, Mike. So uh, definitely keep this stock on the radar over the next few days and few weeks. And uh, I don't know. I hope that it gets approved and we see a Canopy USA. That would be pretty sick. No doubt. And as we've always said with weed stocks, they are some of the craziest moving stocks in the entire market. And it's important to play them the right way. Of course, everyone can look at a stock like CGC rising up by, you know, from $3 a share all the way up to $11.50 a share just over the course of a couple weeks. But just because you see a giant increase, that doesn't mean it's uh, easy to trade, right? It depends on how you actually set yourself up with that move. In my opinion, the best way to play a, move, a stock that moves like this is to either scalp it on like a daily basis. So when you see it moving to the upside with a lot of momentum, you know, jump aboard that trade and of course make sure the risk is managed and all the basics like that. 
or just make the decision to swing it, right? But I think the worst thing someone could possibly do with a crazy stock like this one is to uh, just like not have a plan with it, right? Like if you're just um, going into the market each day and sometimes when you see it go up, then you consider getting in and sometimes when you uh, see some news with it, then you consider getting in. It's just like a mess and it makes it very hard to actually catch the big moves when they happen. So I think the best way, make a decision, either scalp it or make a decision to hold it for a set period of time and let it do its thing. But wheat stocks have uh, seen a lot of inflows over the past couple of weeks, and I'm not really too surprised given the election year. Yeah, I'm really not either, and we've been seeing just so much weird news with it between the election year, the DEA uh, de rescheduling of it. That's going to be very interesting, too. And then now we have news with uh, CGC coming into the U.S. market potentially. So, yeah, there's just a lot of crazy news with it over the past few weeks and few months and starting to, I guess, create those good inflows again, right? And hopefully we see CGC move up pretty well here because it's already been up quite a bit, Mike. But as we know, this one's went pretty crazy in the past so uh, hopefully this is just the start for even a bigger move here there we go well let's start looking at some setups for tomorrow a stock i've been hitting on non-stop lately is smci and it's been to the downside and it keeps on moving lower uh not only is it now below the one thousand dollar support but it's now below the 950 dollar support which is awesome to see uh, the next target for this one is 900. That is the uh, most important level going forward. If we can see a break below that, I think this one can definitely flush lower down to like the 800 and. $56 area right around there um, but I am continuing to watch this one to the downside uh, a lot of its hype and momentum has been fading over the uh, past month or so and uh, we have seen some chip stocks start to pull back so I'm going to continue to watch SMCI to the downside but like I always say the most important thing with it is price action. I want to see constant pressure on that low of day and I just want to see weakness with the stock. If the stock gaps up by 7% tomorrow and starts running to the upside, then there's no point in uh, fighting that momentum. Yeah, there's really not. And whenever I'm looking at SMCI here, even on like a daily chart, Mike, I think I even talked about this yesterday. You know, a lot of the charters out there will probably uh, look at these uh, head and shoulder patterns and stuff like that. There's even good resistance here it's bouncing off of. We even have lower highs on this recent uptrend here. So that's uh, that's pretty good to see. I really like SMCI to the downside too. I was liking that move this morning quite a bit. Uh, with my first play, I'm going with Coinbase. I'm looking at this one at 260 to 261. If we can see a solid move up above there, I will go ahead and look at calls tomorrow. I really like that positive price action today, and I think that Bitcoin might start to go for new all-time highs here, You know, especially with that halving coming in soon. I think there's going to be a lot of volatility here in the short term. Sounds great. All right, another stock I'm watching pretty closely is Meta, and it's actually to the downside. So this one has just been ripping nonstop since November of 2022. It has a lot of resistance overhead right around like that $530 area. It got rejected off that level a couple times now. And uh, today was, uh, it wasn't like horrible for Meta, but it was definitely a pretty uh, weak intraday um intraday day, you can say, but I'm continuing to watch this one to the downside. I would love to see a break below $517 per share. And similar to SMCI, I want to see constant pressure on that low of day. And, uh, you know, I just want to see weakness with the stock overall. It definitely helps if the market is falling, but uh, it's one of the top stocks I am watching to the downside. Yeah, I like it down quite a bit here in the short term. That 517 support is pretty big. I will definitely watch it for a possible move and continuation down for tomorrow. But with my next play, Mike, I'm going to get the play that we have not talked about in a little while, and it's actually Affirm. AFRM started kind of coming back today. There, it was up 3.77%. We go out to the daily chart, and they've been dipping a lot recently. But I'm actually in the short term looking for them to come up to retest maybe like $37.50 or so as they start to come back so i'm gonna keep watching this bullishness from a firm today and just watching that short-term support if it breaks back above like 3480 then i'll look at a call opportunity sounds good well tom you know what time it is let's uh, jump right into the momentum plays for tomorrow and with the first one we have smh to the downside smh this one's been pretty popular for us lately mike uh, go ahead and make them break under 222 all right, with the next one, we have Netflix also to the downside. 
Yeah, Netflix had a pretty rough move overall today. Go ahead and make them break under 628 right at that low in after hours. All right, and then with the last one, we have Exxon Mobil for both directions. And this one has been uh, on fire over the past couple of weeks, but it has uh, it's been getting a little bit overextended, Tom. It has. I, this morning, I was like, wow, Exxon's falling down. It's about time. And then uh, they ran all the way back up. And then when the market started closing, like they, they came all the way back. <laughs> What a wild move. But if they break under this $120.20 support, I guess you could say one twenty twenty, then go ahead and look at puts to the downside. If they do end up breaking this recent high, though, right around one twenty two, then I have calls. There we go. So we have the upside level for calls, and we have the downside level for puts with ExxonMobil. Don't forget about the downside levels with Netflix and then SMH as well. These three stocks are on watch for potential day trades if and only if they break through the levels Tom listed. We are looking for strong breakthroughs of the levels and then continuations in those directions. But the wait is now over and it's time to uh, dive into today's big money trade of the day. And uh, this one is very interesting and it's uh, definitely different than most. So today the big money put around $378,000 into ticker symbol KTOS. This is uh, Kratos and it is a defense company. As we all know, uh, conflicts around the world like in between Russia and Ukraine Everything in the Middle East and hopefully not uh, between China and Taiwan um, have been increasing over the coming months. If we continue to see more escalation of you know those war-related events, that can that can definitely help out uh, defense-related stocks. I've already seen some of them like Raytheon, which is ticker symbol RTX, have a phenomenal uptrend uh, over the past couple weeks and the past couple months. So that's definitely worth noting. But as we look at a stock like KTOS, where the big money just put $378,000 into the 20 strike call options today with the uh, July 19th expiration date, it definitely makes you think, right? Like in the event uh, these conflicts uh, continue to spread and get worse, uh, it can definitely help out a lot of these defense-related stocks. So I like the risk-reward, and it's uh, definitely a very interesting big money play. It really is, Mike. I think that this is an extremely interesting company as well. If you guys are ever interested, go check out KratosDefense.com. It's a really interesting website. They have a lot of stuff that they uh, get into. So a lot of different technology things that I would think would be really good for the future, Mike. So I really like the support short term. And overall, I really like this big money play. It goes out to July. You don't have to swing it too long, maybe just for two to three months or so. And you know, just ride this wave up. But I even like the charting on it too. This this support is looking pretty good in the short term. And for all of our uh, gap fill traders out there, there's a pretty big gap to fill on the chart up to $20. There we go. So keep a close eye on this one going forward. Uh, as I've said a couple times now, it's uh, related to the defense industry. So whenever you think about increasing tensions between any of the conflict or with any of the conflicts we have going on around the world, Keep a close eye on this one. But Tom, going into tomorrow, you know, we have a huge week ahead of us, especially with this inflation data. And I think the name of the game right now is to follow the money. But of course, keep your risk in check. Um, you know, we do have a couple stocks that are moving in some pretty big ways right now, uh, like some of these chip stocks, especially. I'm, again, I'm looking at SMCI pretty closely. But uh, let's follow the money and let's make this week a great one. Yeah, it's looking good so far. There's been a few good moves. I know that the overall market today didn't really do much, but we saw those good moves with SMCI. Coinbase had some decent movement. Don't forget about the Bitcoin stocks, guys. Those are going to be really fun over the next month. And then the weed stocks, CGC has that event Friday. We have Tilray earnings tomorrow morning. That's going to be great. So uh, smash that like button if you enjoyed the video tonight. And hey, let me know in the comments how you feel about CGC this weekend or if you have any more info on it. Definitely throw it out there because CGC is one of those in companies that's been pretty interesting over the past couple of years. And like you mentioned, keep a close eye on TLRY tomorrow. They are reporting earnings, and we all know how uh, crazy these weed stocks are. Uh, last but not least, I want to give a giant shout-out to today's member of the day, James, in the Stocked Up Trading Floor. Uh, you've been crushing it lately, and you've been a great member of the community for months now. So huge shout-out to you, and keep up all the great work. Besides that, if you guys are new here, uh, consider demolishing that subscribe button to get our videos recommended to you more often. 
11. In every single video, we cover the most important news you need to know, some great setups, some interesting big money plays, and we try to get all of this done in 20 to 25 minutes or less. Besides that, thank you all so much for watching, and let's crush it this week.